Hey guys, welcome back to the Go and Chess Trio. This is Anurag, and today we shall be having a look at an interesting game that I played out in the uh, title arena a few weeks back. Um, I don't know the exact date, but uh, it was against uh, the world champion, the current world champion, Magnus Carlsen. Now, it was a very interesting game, which uh, did not go my way, but uh, I would like to share my experience and walk you through it. There is a lot more than uh, only chess about this game. There is also the psychological aspects about chess that many people tend to forget. And this is exactly where I went wrong here in the game, because I couldn't uh, hold uh, uh, my nerves and uh, no I do not have nerves of steel and this is what happened here we will have a look and see what went wrong in this game it was pretty interesting and wild uh, yeah let's get started anyways uh, so the game uh, it started out with uh, Magnus playing f4 actually the thing is that uh, in the beginning I did not know this was Magnus I was not aware it was his account he had another account with Dr. Drunkenstein or something which I was aware of so I was not aware that this also was his account he seems to have many accounts on uh, leeches so anyways let's have a look I played I played g6 here uh, this is not the best way to deal with it, but it is uh, it's a neutral light here. Knight f3, bishop g7, and uh, Magnus went with g3 here, going for going for sorry about that, going for uh, bishop g2 next, and after knight f6, bishop g2, castle, castle, nothing out of the ordinary here. Now black does tend to have an idea of getting something like e5 in this position, d6, e5, or he can play the d5, c5. Uh, structure here in this position he has a choice uh, I chose uh, c5 in this game so my idea is uh, keeping the flexibility of also going with d5 if I want to depending on what black does but I can also play this plan with d6 knight c6 also in this position uh, Magnus went with uh, d3 clearly the idea of e4 he did not play e4 immediately but uh, knight c3 which is delaying e4 for a moment I went with d6 d5 actually would be the preferred choice here the top choice but I chose d6 uh, e4 was played out uh, in the game and uh, uh, again to make you aware of it this is a 1 plus 0 format so it's a bullet format by the way not blitz or uh, not classical it's 1 plus 0 so 1 minute each and that's why we are blitzing out moves here so rook b8 this is a very standard idea in this position uh, it's a this is called the english structure and we do tend to play rook b8 and try to expand on the queen side with b5 further h3 and black white see the the point here is black attacks on the king uh, queen side and white attacks uh, on the king side like he tries to create some possibilities on the king side here so b5 g4 and b4 i'm expanding further knight e2 bishop d7 now this was not really an optimal choice in this position but since it's bullet we were trying to play as fast as possible i would prefer to play a5 and sometimes i can utilize my bishop on a6 here there are some tactics with e5 and the knight on c6 hanging but currently uh, the knight being on f3 uh, in between this tactics would not have worked so i could have gone with a5 actually which would be the better choice but after bishop b7 knight g3 white improves his knight to a better square i go with knight d7 i'm uh, assuming that he'll be going g5 or something anyway so i just play knight d7 uh, directly and also open up my bishop for some possibilities here so knight d4 rook uh, b1 and a knight into f3 bishop into queen into f3 and i followed up with knight e5 clearly this is the standard way the knight has no way uh, nobody is going to challenge the knight at least immediately like c3 d4 will be needed which is uh, not going to come very easily so knight e5 is quite stable here also if the queen let's say goes back to e2 sometimes i can also retreat my knight and try to transfer it to d4 where i can create some extra problems for black for white and black's white's idea will be to play g5 so i have to be i have to be concerned that he might get f6 and a strong attack brewing here but let's see how things went uh minus one with queen f2 here this does not allow any tactic don't get too excited this is not really possible because let's say i try something like this bishop e3 comes in the way so magnus has not missed the tactic yet here 
but after queen f2 i played knight c6 this was not really needed but again it's a bullet game and we're trying to play as fast as possible so i tried to uh, immediately go with the plan of knight c6 opening up bishop d4 possibility also knight d4 coming on the board uh, maybe queen a5 or something would have been a much better try in this position knight c6 king h2 magnus moving out of the way there uh, queen a5 next i went with queen a5 and magnus ignoring the a2 pawn which was not really uh, an ideal choice i think he should have probably defended this pawn with something like a3 in this position it's a little passive and allows me to immediately get b into a3 b into a3 maybe bishop a8 and try to initiate some exchanges very easily here or i might as well go back to knight e5 and consolidate the position once the b file is open it's easier for me to get something going in the game so what magnus does is completely ignores and gambits the pawn you like gambits well magnus is playing in that factor i accepted it i played bishop d4 actually just taking uh, care of anything with f6 um until now i'm not really aware that it is magnus anyways i should have taken queen a2 which would be completely fine here i was a little worried that once he moves the bishop my queen might, might have some trouble again bullet chess so we have to think fast and i tend i i, I overestimated its chances i clearly did not have to worry too much my queen can come back and the engine shows something like bishop b2 this is a little too much like to uh, see in a bullet game because it's very risky considering there are a lot of things happening here so yeah I, I shied away from it and played something like bishop d4 so i took care of the f6 idea this is still better now for black bishop e3 bishop into e3 and finally a captured queen into a2 so here i am i'm not very afraid of my queen getting trapped because rook a1 queen into b2 and my queen is definitely coming back on this diagonal and f6 was played by magnus here now this initiates some dangerous possibilities and it's a little bit of a concern but i wasn't really that afraid because uh, he still has a long way to maneuver his queen to h6 so i do have some time to come back knight e5 played out by me this is this is a good move because if he if i give away this pawn now he doesn't really have any mating idea on g7 that is more of a concern for me uh the e7 pawn is uh, not really a concern so i don't mind if he takes on f e7 well clearly magnus is not going to but i don't really mind if he does and secondly i wouldn't want to you would never want to push something like e6 or e5 in this position that opens up some dangerous possibilities of course you you can calculate and think and maybe verify and then enter it but it could work but it is something that is very risky to do because you have completely closed down the position here and now once h4 h5 rolls down it uh, it gets into something very dangerous for us to deal with so i felt safer with knight e5 rook a1 played out by magnus so bullet game you're trying to do something very quickly and trying to complicate things that's the most key factor here magnus is trying to complicate things because if he tries to play simple chess now knight e5 also stops h4 by the way now if he tries to play simple chess like taking care of it with king h1 that would take some time and i could get my queen back and i, I can improve as i go along so it will become difficult and difficult more difficult for magnus to exploit this so he tries to complicate things with rook a1 queen into b2 rook into a7 that's why i was very comfortable here because i really didn't have to worry too much about fe7 i was happy that he takes the pawn and my f7 pawn is also defended very well with the knight Again, this knight is a key factor in this game because you cannot really get rid of this knight with d4 and c3 now is not really possible. So this knight is basically a stronghold here. Black White will have to figure out some very weird sacrifice here to remove this knight from e5. So I took queen into c2 fearlessly here f into e7 and rook f8 by now at this stage actually i had more time than magnus and thus far i've completely outplayed him i mean i'm clearly better here actually in the game i was a little concerned that there are still a lot of possibilities here but i felt safe i was i was quite okay d4 played out by magnus this doesn't really change too much but he has to complicate some things and he tries to exploit the d6 pawn this is not really concerned because i found a move here which is queen c5 so this attacks the queen and the rook trying to force the exchange of the queens magnus could have tried something like queen a1 but that's very passive and then there is no active threat for white i will just simply capture and i am at the moment two pawns up like i have two extra pawns so we can consider these two as extra pawns and black is but pieces are not really that actively placed that he can um, he, he has any compensation for it so i'm happy here in this position 
but Magnus went with queen into c5, d into c, b into c5 and rook uh, c1. So I had many ways to deal with that, but I choose the simplest c4. I have two connected pass pawns and there is no way that black should probably lose this game. No way. In any other game, any other instance, I would not lose this. An interesting thing happened after knight of fun b3 and white played knight e3. This is completely lost for white. But something went wrong here. I came to know that it is Magnus from somebody because I was winning. People were watching my game and uh, uh, they were quite excited and people started spamming that it is Magnus. And uh, suddenly I read that it is Magnus and uh, I don't know what happened. This shouldn't have happened, but I got a little bit unnerved because I was winning. I got that um, the thing where you're about to win and you have to play it carefully you have to clutch it without missing anything so something changed there which shouldn't have any other player any other time like any other game or i would uh, let's say i would not know who the player is I, i'm sure i would not this would have not happened uh i hope not this doesn't really happen to you people also who are watching you can learn from this like if you're playing a stronger player it doesn't really matter who you're playing all you have to do is just play the best moves you can beat anybody so just keep calm focus on only your game not on the opponent so that's very important in chess because if you feel like your opponent is strong well you can be stronger than him like here and i'm not saying i completely outplayed magnus but i did it it panned out like that so i shouldn't have been affected by what happened here and i played b2 rook b1 and c3 and with two pawns here nobody would ever expect me to lose from here but things started falling apart because now what happened is i think the time difference was not that much but maybe five seconds more for me than magnus that's for more for me actually i should not have lost this in uh, under any circumstances but rook a3 played out by magnus and attacking this pawn now i should have simply played the very simple rook b c8 in this position just defending this pawn i'm going to capture the e7 pawn next and i can convert it as slowly or as efficiently as I, as possible i don't even need to play c2 immediately if magnus does c2 i just capture on e7 and that's it the game is just falling apart you, I, I would expect magnus maybe he would resign or maybe not but it's a position that it's just just lost for for white but what happened here is i chose something like knight c4 now this is I do tend to play some moves like this often but this was a horrible choice because this is just a tactic which is completely wrong because I only saw knight into c4 in the bust of the time because it's a one minute game knight into c4 and that's it there is c2 and you're winning but I completely forgot to calculate rook into c3 and after rook into c3 white is just back in the game so this completely threw me off because from a completely winning position now I have to I have to fight and convert it but I don't know what went wrong I started blundering move and move after here which is uh, pretty unfortunate and terrible for me but I should have kept a cool mind and approached this position in a new angle I, I, I could have won this still it is winning for black all I need to do is keep my cool but after that into e3 rook into e3 I, sh I took rook into e7 which is a big mistake here like you don't want to allow such pins on the board ever like these pins can can cost you the game now this is definitely not lost but it is almost close to equal now black is definitely white is definitely doing completely fine here because i should just move the rook away rook b e8 and i may win this pawn or i may not but it doesn't really matter it's still a draw with three against two pawn in the rook end games by the way if you do uh, enjoy watching uh, end game videos or you do want to learn something then you can definitely check out we have a lot of end game videos on our channel nandini has a lot of videos and we'll be coming up with more uh, on the channel also pretty soon but I could have played something like bishop a6 in this position ignoring this pawn now white will have to still work to capture the b2 pawn and that keeps gives me some chance for example rook a3 i can move my bishop to c4 again not allowing rook a2 so i can make his life difficult to capture the pawn probably even winning after this because he cannot really move the rook because of this strong possibility and it is difficult for white to come up with a plan let's say rook c3 that is bishop a2 suddenly he's lost so he has to be more accurate 
I saw this move, but somehow I just played rook into e7 in a hurry. I don't really know why, but rook into e7 is a big blunder here. After rook into b2, it's close to equal. But I made a blunder and blunder in quick succession, which was, I don't know how I did that, but I did do that. Rook e8 again here. Like, I don't really understand how I played rook e8. This is the horrible move here, and it is lost after this. Because, like I said, you don't want to allow any pins. And this is a simple pin to deal with now. I cannot really do anything about it. It's just a pin. And next he's going to get e5. And three pieces are pinning my rook here. I have to either give up the exchange or I might lose an entire rook. You, you Or a piece. Like, it's just lost after that. So... I, I played rook bd8 and gave up the bishop here which was uh, I mean it, it's lost either ways one of the things that I could try again in the end game here is suppose luckily let's say I managed to exchange everything off the board and only get uh, uh, let's say a bishop let's say I want to give you an example here uh, let's let's take off a few pieces uh, from the board and uh, uh, let me just quickly do it for you and let's say this is a position here on the board let's say this is a position on the board now i can definitely hold it to a draw because all i need to do is exchange the pawns and now when i play f6 here like if he plays h4 i just capture capture and play g h6 and just all the pawns off the board which is a very simple draw but the important point is after g f6 king f6 this is a dark square uh, queening, uh, queening uh, square and this is a light square bishop that doesn't really win so no matter if i have this pawn so i do not have this pawns i lose both the h7 and g6 pawn it doesn't really matter because it's still a draw so that was on my mind here which is something that you should also try to do like uh, whenever in your in a losing position try to figure out a way to try to come back but that did not happen here and there is no way that i can get it going in this position there are too many pawns and the pin is way too strong so i ended up playing rook b d8 and after rook into b7 i just resigned because it was just over after this the time difference also wasn't that much and i was not uh, i was very upset about what i did because after a clearly winning position suddenly i'm I'm just lost here which is very uh, disheartening and uh, that too against the world champion a golden opportunity squandered by me so the point the learning curve is like if you do not uh, know who you play that that sometimes even works in your favor so the point is that don't try to focus on your opponent too much just focus on your own game that is way more important than chess if you are affected by who your opponent is you will never improve finally what do you want to do you want to become a world champion or you want to become somebody strong if you want to become a strong you got to take out the strong people so just focus on that and um, that is the learning point here actually uh, i learned that i should not be affected uh, by whoever i play this is this is not the way i should have done it i should have held my own and converted it because i also had extra time on the clock anyways i hope you like this video if you do like the video subscribe to our channel hit the like button press the bell icon to stay updated and uh, i will see you soon in the next one until then have a nice day stay safe